the age of 22, I remember watching a movie called Room and becoming so emotional. All I did was weep what seemed to be endlessly. I called a close family member who is my biggest support and my support system and told them that this movie reminded me of their story and mine. As I continued to cry, I started declaring how tired I was of having a mental health condition. At the time, I was under the impression that they had come on board with the fact that I had a mental health condition. However, to my dismay, they did not take this very well and began shouting at me. What struck me most about what had now become a one-way conversation was being asked if I roamed the streets speaking incoherently, wearing sacks, or looking unkempt. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> or looking unkempt. I immediately became very infuriated and more misunderstood, just as I'd felt for most of my life. And my only response was, but that's what I have. Like most people, I do not take being shouted at very well and usually dissociate when this happens, which is what happened for the rest of this conversation pertaining to how I should never say that. This conversation did not help how I felt in that moment. And what seemed to be a floodgate of tears streamed from my eyes as the conversation ended. Although I had Googled and researched so many times what mental health meant, I had to go back and do it again just to get some clarity. Mental illness, also called mental health disorders, is a wide variety of mental health conditions, disorders that affect mood, thinking, and behaviors. Just as I'd assumed, the interpretation of mental illness possibly meant schizophrenia, which is characterized by experiences and thoughts that seem out of touch with reality and coupled with disorganized speech and behavior. Is mental illness a new thing under the sun? I believe not. Most people suffering from some of the mental illnesses previously mentioned commit or attempt to commit suicide at some point in their life or are consumed with its ideation, especially if it goes untreated. The World Health Organization reports that every 40 seconds, a person commits suicide. My condition is accompanied by a fluctuation in mood, which has often led me to lonely, dark, and excruciatingly painful spaces where I cannot see the light. However, I managed to come out of these spaces several times, and I'm still on the journey to discovering myself. <sighs> and I'm still on the journey to discovering myself. However, I cannot, I cannot sufficiently explain to you the despair and unfathomable pain that one feels that leads to this resort. People suffering from mental illness are subjected to a lot of stigma, a mark of disgrace cu coupled with being devalued and are often shunned and excluded from mainstream society. This is not only exclusive to Africa, but the world over. I'm so sorry, I'm so nervous. <laughs> to draw it cl a little closer to home, in most African societies, those suffering from bipolar, epilepsy, or schizophrenia are considered as being crazy, dangerous, demon-possessed, subjects to witchcraft, or as harboring an evil spirit, and those suffering from depression as being lazy, weak, or as imagining their condition, especially because it does not present, the symptoms do not present themselves, the physical symptoms, that is. As a result of these perceptions, sufferers are often denied access to the necessary treatment that they need, or are disowned by their families, and if they attempt to or succeed in committing suicide, they're labeled as being selfish and stupid. And this is justified by that black people have gone through a lot of pain in the past. Although there are a lot of um, life-changing treatments that are now available in the 21st century, I can personally attest to the fact that it is a rather complex process to find a right, the right combination or the right life-changing drug. I suffer from bipolar disorder. 
which thus far from 2013, when I started taking medication and attending therapy, has proven to be very stubborn and resistant to these methods. This keeps happening. <laughs> Some symptoms of mental illness manifest long before a diagnosis. I was probably the most moodiest child that you've ever met, who was consumed with anger and often isolated herself. In my teenage years, I, I was consumed with a lot of confusion, a fluctuation in functioning, and that led to um, a difficulty in that led to a difficulty in regulating certain impulses, which made it a very scary time in my life. I often felt very lonely and vulnerable with regards to how, to making meaning of how I felt and the behaviors that I presented with. And I had little to no emotional support. I know now that some of these impulses and behaviors were, as a result, were symptoms of my condition. As in most African households, I was always in trouble and seemed like a sport brat when these were actually my ways of screaming out that something was terribly wrong. Although I wasn't, it's not that I was necessarily a bad child, but I was missing out on having an understanding of my behavior, of my be making meaning out of my behaviors from childhood. It would have probably been different had I received the necessary treatment at the time instead of 19 years later. Mental illness does not discriminate according to race, gender, or culture. And yet cultural bias often influences the treatment that one receives and people's opinions. The South African Depression and Anxiety Group estimates that every one in three South Africans will suffer from a mental health issue at some point in their life. As Elmarie Duplessis, a clinical psychologist, reports, Due to African misunderstandings in what mental illness is, patients often have to hide their condition from their traditional communities and to their family members as Western medication and psychologists are viewed as being are frowned upon and viewed as being Western phenomenons. As, again, People suffering from mental illness are denied the necessary life-changing treatments, and sometimes they are taken to religious gatherings, prophets, leaders for healing from the alleged evil that they possess, and some are taken to witch doctors for cleansing. Mental illness is a very difficult concept to grapple with, and it's as it always, as people don't always present with the symptoms that they expected to be presenting. And people then find it very difficult to understand how yesterday you were fine and today you are not. I have to breathe so often. Sorry, this is going to take a while. <laughs> Due to these perceptions, it can be very difficult to accept one being diagnosed or seeking and complying with treatment. When I was first diagnosed, it was with depression, which to me was a Western phenomenon I'd never bothered to find out about. And so was the idea of taking antidepressants. It took me weeks to come to terms with the fact that I needed to take antidepressants and to actually start taking the medication prescribed to me weeks before. It also took me a long time to come to terms with the fact that mental illness is not a Western phenomenon. It was very heartbreaking a few months ago when I went for therapy and as I came out of the office, bumped into a young gentleman who had just come out of his um, session with a psychiatrist. And he stopped me to ask me, what do they do here? As I started to explain, I was doing such an awful job. And immediately, he stopped me to ask, what are you doing here? The only words that came out of my mouth were, I have bipolar disorder. 
I knew this was probably going to be accompanied by a question of what that meant, as I'm often asked. And as I began trying to explain the manic side of it, I was asked what was wrong with that, and immediately asked, how did you get it? That was a very difficult question. And that was a very difficult question. <laughs> <laughs> but to cut the long story short, this young gentleman had been told to wait outside while they called an ambulance to take him to the hospital. And I knew exactly what he was feeling in that moment and the confusion that consumed him. Within our black communities, it's not only in the traditional homes, but in the, com in the contemporary ones as well, it is imperative that mental health awareness and its different forms be spread. Talks of death, talks of death, isolation, dreading to leave the house, always canceling appointments and stopping to take care of one's personal hygiene are good signs to look out for. In children, it is more difficult to detect. And, but hyperactivity, changes in sleeping patterns, and temper tantrums are good signs to look out for as well. Often, we're not interested in things that do not directly concern us. However, we would save more lives if we could pick up that something was wrong with someone before things exacerbate to them committing suicide or being hospitalized, just as the young gentleman and I have experienced. Have, have experienced. It was also imperative that we notice that our, although our parents' interpretation of mental illness might be incorrect, they might also be suffering from a mental health condition and due to these beliefs will not seek the necessary help. It is also critical that we pay attention and respond with sensitivity when people confide in us with what challenges they might be facing and help them to utilize the necessary resources available. Resources such as traditional healers who are now becoming more involved in the mental health sector, psych psychiatrists and psychotherapy. When I look at the friendship bench, which began in Zimbabwe and trains grandmothers to help those suffering from mental health conditions and creates safe spaces that, uh, that provide a level of care and safety when in trying to understand what they're going through. I can guarantee you that it is not impossible or ever too late to learn and help others as well. We must also help with self-empowerment, helping our loved ones understand the, what they might be going through, the, its effects on themselves, their brain, and the different dimensions of oneself. I must commend the young gentleman who accompanied the other young man I previously mentioned to his appointment, which he made for him, actually. He did not, they did not, they were not friends, um, but they lived in the same residence. And he took the same initiative that we must take upon himself to, to do this. I truly long for the day when there is large scale education and advocacy to destigmatize mental illness, just as we have seen with women. Thank you.